Volunteer rescue workers record their efforts on mobile phones, pressing through the smoke and debris of another airstrike on this Damascus suburb. They race to get children to safety, fearing from experience a second missile could hit. Syria's warplanes have long been criticized for attacking civilian areas, but with the added might of the Russian Air Force now running missions in support of the regime, the U.S. president has issued a stark warning. Regardless of what Mr. Putin said was that he doesn't distinguish between ISIL and a moderate Sunni opposition that wants to see Mr. Assad go. From their perspective, they're all terrorists, and that's a recipe for disaster, and it's one that I reject. In Paris, Russian President Vladimir Putin held tense talks with European leaders, ostensibly about Ukraine, but Syria was the unavoidable focus. French President Francois Hollande said cooperation with Moscow would only be achieved with three solid commitments. To limit attacks to IS and Al-Qaeda-linked groups, to avoid civilian casualties, and to agree to a political process that would ultimately see President Assad removed. La Russie s'engage. Russia is involved in Syria, but it has always been involved in Syria. Since the beginning, Russia has supported the regime of Bashar al-Assad and provided him with weapons. Even if it goes further now, they stick to the same line, which is providing support to Bashar al-Assad and to his regime. Moscow had initially claimed the latest strikes hit 12 Islamic State targets, but the Defence Ministry then revised that down to six. France's president has questioned even this. Most of the areas hit were in western and northern parts of Syria, while Islamic State is strongest in the east. Allah Akbar. In a country already ravaged by years of war, the impact of the latest surge in airstrikes is nonetheless clear. It's led the UN to suspend some of its aid missions at a time when they are needed more than ever. Tom Rayner, Sky News.